All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be giving you an overview of Calculus 2, also known as Integral Calculus. Now, Calculus 2 is a pretty hard course for a lot of students, so I think it's gonna be really good just to break it down and give you an idea of what you're gonna be learning in Calculus 2. All right, so before we get into the actual Calculus 2 material, let's talk about where you left off with in Calculus 1. Now in Calculus 1, also known as Differential Calculus, you did a lot of differentiation, right? You did a lot of derivatives, you did a lot of applying derivatives, right? Or just doing applications with derivatives. And you probably did a little bit of integration at the end, um, more like, probably like uh, reverse power rule and um, integration by substitution. Okay, so you know, and if you did more than that, that's great. If you didn't do that, it does get reviewed at the beginning of Calculus 2. So, of course, you know, don't worry. So, let's get into the actual Calculus 2 material now that you know where you pretty much left off with. Now, you'll see on my screen here, we have our first kind of unit in Calculus 2, which is the applications of integration. So basically here you're going to be using, you know, the reverse power rule, you're going to be using integration by substitution, and you're going to be finding a couple different things. The first thing is you're going to be finding the area between two curves. Now this isn't all that hard really, I mean before we were finding the area under f of x, right, and now we add another function and we're finding the area between those two functions, right, and all we really have to do here not to get into too much detail but we subtract out this area down here and there you go next we also have to find the volume of a solid of revolution now these can be a little bit trickier okay uh, you basically start out with a function here we have y equals the square root of x and really here you rotate it around here it's rotated around the x-axis but it can be rotated around a line or the y-axis or things like that and here we get a solid. And we find that volume by taking cross sections. Okay, we take cross sections of this solid and we add them up. And of course, that sounds a lot like integrating, so that's exactly what we're doing. Okay, and there are different methods for this, as you can see over on the right hand side here. Sometimes your cross sections, you can see here, will be washer, right? This, this little green disc is a washer, and you can see the space here I've highlighted in pink. Okay, so. You, you know, there's a bunch of different things that you're going to be doing with that volume of a solid of revolution. So, you know, a lot of different methods. It's not all that hard, but it can be a little bit confusing at times. Moving on, next we have uh, the techniques of integration. Okay, so this is where you learn more about uh, just kind of how to integrate. Because now in Calculus 1, you, you know, you talked about like just, just, integration by you know substitution and reverse power rule but for derivatives there was like six different techniques right you know you had you had just taking it a derivative with power rule right you had chain rule you had product rule quotient rule things like that and you know of course that was you you have the same kind of thing for integration as well okay we start off with integration by parts okay integration by parts right here okay and with integration by parts, you're going to be able to solve integrals where there are two things being multiplied together, like x times cosine x. Next, we have trig integrals. Okay, trig integrals, you know, basically just trig functions that have uh, exponents, right? Um, we have inverse trig substitutions, so you can solve something like this without having to do, having to like, like, of course, you couldn't do a U substitution already, but here you kind of do a special type of substitution with, uh, you know, a, a trig function, and it actually ends up working out really nice. Now, here's the one that everybody hates, and that's partial fraction decomposition. Uh, this is one where you have this ginormous fraction, and you break it up into a bunch of smaller fractions, uh, and you're able to integrate it a lot easier. It's just a long process. It's not really hard, I guess. Uh, we also cover improper integrals. Now, improper integrals, basically integrals with either they can have a discontinuity, like, you know, 1 over x. Well, this integrand, well, if you plug in 0 for x, this is undefined, right? So, 
you have to kind of take that into consideration with improper integrals. And you also, if you have a negative infinity or an infinity in your bounds, then you have to do special things and you're gonna learn all about that. Okay, now you're also just going to have to look at a integral, right? Something like this, okay? And you're going to have to choose which method to use, okay? And I go over that in my Calculus 2 course. I, of course, I make it easy, so it's not really as much of choosing as it is just seeing what you have and kind of matching what you have with the best technique of integration okay but anyways for this one and this is how they like to get you a lot this is actually just a, a u substitution but they like to throw those in there to trick you up and, and make you do something a lot harder maybe like an inverse trig sub okay moving on uh the 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 third kind of unit here is just it's, it's a quick one more applications of integration so now that you know how to integrate in uh, a couple more ways you're able to do these problems which is just finding the arc length and finding the surface area okay so the arc length where well, you know for for this uh for this graph right here we have uh y equals sine x okay and we have in the uh, the the red line here uh, for y equals sine of x right here. Okay, if we were trying to you know if we want to find the actual length of that curve, you know that's basically the arc length, right? And we we can do that by uh, it's just really a, a formula that you use, and it just ends up being a kind of nasty integral. And you can also create an arc length function, which is down here, and that's basically just. Uh, a function where you plug in a certain x value and it gives you the arc length from uh, zero to that x value. Okay, now we've gone to do surface area. Now we have that same uh, vol uh, that same surface from before, but now instead of finding the volume, we're finding the surface area of it. And this is not as nasty of a formula. Uh, it's kind of an addition to the arc length formula, but the addition makes it actually easier to integrate uh, generally. So, and I'm not going to get into showing you all these different formulas now because this is just an overview, but you kind of get the idea. Okay, so, you know, now we're going to be finding surface area. Okay, moving on, this is kind of the, uh, the, the kind of like the calm before the storm, I guess. This is uh, parametric and polar. Okay, and you'll see why it's the calm before the storm in the, the, in the next chapter that we discuss. But it's a couple different things here. Uh, you know, you talk about parametric equations, okay, which is just basically uh, putting, a, putting a parameter into uh, your, your equation. So now it's not like before it, we would do like y equals f of x, right? Well, now it's not like that. Now we do uh, x is a function of t and y is a function of t okay and when you plug in a, a t value okay you get an x y pair okay so you can see kind of an example of parametric equations right here all right so you plug in a certain t value let's say one and you get an x value you get a y value those come together to be an x y pair okay now you can take derivatives, you can take integrals with parametric equations, okay? So here's an example of a derivative, okay? And for integral, here's here's what you'll have to be using. This is called the substitution rule, and it's actually fairly simple, okay? you'll Once you get to this point, you'll be able to understand this fairly easily, okay? And you're able to, kind of off of the, the arc length and surface area stuff that we did up here, you can get the arc length and surface area equation for uh, parametric equations, okay? And that's uh, all over here. Now moving on, we have uh, polar, okay? So, so polar equations, this may be familiar to you from, uh, from probably like just, I don't know, like 11th grade, like your 12th grade, whatever, when you did, I think, was it pre-calc? I don't know. But you, you, these, these polar equations, so now instead of doing y equals f of x, you do, and let's see if I have any room to write this, you do r equals a function of theta, okay? And you'll see kind of more about this, why it's useful, things like that. But, uh, you know, you are able to convert from 
Cartesian, which is x and y, to polar, which is, of course, r and theta, okay, using these conversions that I just highlighted. Okay, so you know here's an example of converting. So y equals x squared. Well, what does that look like as far as a as a polar equation would go? Well, it'd be r equals tangent theta over cosine theta. Okay, and, and that's kind of the idea there. And you can also take derivatives and in, and in integrals with polar equations. You can see here you can actually find dy dx, which is a, a Cartesian derivative, right? Compared to and you can you can do that. Um, taking by taking some polar derivatives and just plugging in some sines and cosines okay and don't think that you have to memorize this entire like this huge formula while it's you know probably going to be nice to memorize it you don't have to right you you and i, I understand I, I i show you in my calculus 2 course where that whole thing comes from so you can just find it by yourself and, and here's how you integrate uh, polar two. So, you know, it's just a bunch of equations that you don't necessarily have to memorize, but you have to understand how you get to those equations, okay? So moving on, we have arc length, okay? This is kind of the last thing that you'll do with polar, okay? Now, here, I mean, you're just, again, like, like how we got our arc length equation up here with, um, parametric equations, we basically go one step further to get our arc length equation for polar. Okay. So, you know, that's the idea. It's just, uh, like I said before, it's a bunch of equations. And if you understand how you get there, you don't really need to memorize it and it becomes a lot easier. Okay. That's one of the key things that I had to do in calculus too, instead of memorizing a bunch of different things. Now, here's kind of more of the, the storm that I was talking about. This is the sequences and series chapter. This is where a lot of students get, get tripped up, okay? Now, you start off by talking about sequences, okay? Now, sequences, you know, something that you dealt with in high school most likely, okay? You have, you, you plug in a n value and you get a a sub n. Okay, so you you know you might have an equation like a sub n equals two n plus one. Okay, you plug in an n, and you get an a sub n. All right, and, and that's kind of the idea there. And you can you can plot those. You can see that these are dots because n has to be a positive integer. Okay, or or just actually in just an integer in general, but um. And, and you do a couple things with this. You learn some different terms like uh, if the sequence is convergent, if it's bounded, if it's monotonic. Okay, and those are the different terms that you see. And, and you know you have to have kind of you'll have some questions that are asking those different things about a sequence. Then you kind of move on to series. And with series, you you know you you talk about a couple special types of series. One is the geometric series, okay, and that takes on the form, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a times r to the n minus 1. And basically, you know, what you're doing here, okay, because this summation notation might not be uh, very recognizable to you or you might not understand what's going on at all here. And really, you're just adding up a bunch of terms. Actually, you're adding up an infinite number of terms. You're adding up from n equals one to infinity, right? So that's an infinite number of terms. Okay, and you're you're adding all those up, and you're asking whether that series is going to converge or whether it's going to diverge. And basically, if it converges, it actually has a finite sum, and that's really weird, right? How can something, how can something that has infinite terms have a finite sum, right? So that's kind of that's something that we talk about in my calculus two course okay then you basically you know it, it, it's very straightforward how if you how you know if a geometric series converges or diverges but you're going to have a bunch of other different types of series and that's where the series tests come into play okay the series tests basically you know there's seven of them and i have my own acronym again which i discuss in my calculus two course um, and it basically you know 
it, it organizes all these different tests that you have to do into this checklist, okay? And, and these these tests, I mean, they they don't take too, too much time by themselves, but there is quite a few of them, okay? And all of it is just to prove if a series is going to converge or diverge, okay? Now, we move on to kind of the place where I think a lot more students get lost, and that's power series, right? We talk about power series. Basically what that is, is now you have a sum, okay? But now you have an X in it. Okay, you, you start incorporating X, all right? And the big question that you start to ask is what values of X are gonna make the series converge or diverge? Okay, so maybe if you have X before, well, now the series is going to diverge, but if it's less than four, if it's three or two, you know, something like that, the series is going to converge, okay? So, you know, things like that, okay? and what you know why we kind of start to do power series is so we can do we can represent functions as power series okay so here you'll see that let's pick a different color i guess yeah one minus one over x is actually equal to this series the this the sum right with with infinite terms okay and it, it's summing up uh, from n equals zero to infinity of x of n, okay? And in that right there is equal to just this one over one minus x function, okay? And, and that's that's kind of, you know, it, it's hard to think about right now because you haven't really been through this unit yet, but just, you know, this is giving you an idea of what you're gonna be learning, okay? And since you know that this is true, you can then find what is one over one plus x represented. Uh, as a series okay and lastly you talk about the Taylor and McLaurin series okay the Taylor and McLaurin series that's the last thing that you talk about and really you know it, it if you haven't understood the things that come before Taylor and McLaurin it's very very hard otherwise it's actually pretty simple if you have a you know a concrete understanding of everything that you've talked about before Taylor and McLaurin Okay, basically, it's kind of like the the series tests. Okay, you right above Taylor and McLaurin. Okay, it's it's so you can you know for for the series tests, the idea was so you could prove any series was convergent or divergent, right? Not just something like a geometric series, which you'll learn you'll automatically know if it's like a specific type of series. Okay, so like like like. Basically, what, what happens with the geometric series, it's a special case, and dependent on this R, you'll know whether it converges or diverges right away, okay? And, and, and the series tests, it works for any series. Taylor and Maclaurin works, you know, it, it represents any function, or mostly any function, as, as, a, as a power series, right? But with function, representing functions as power series over here, it's, it's kind of for just, you know, a couple special types uh, of functions, okay? So, you know, Taylor and McLaurin works for a wider variety of functions. That's that's the idea, okay? So that's basically an, an overview of Calculus 2, okay? Now, it, it can seem pretty overwhelming. I tried to kind of not touch on anything too, too much. So there's definitely going to be some things in here that confused you, and, and that's that's okay. But that's, that's just, you know, this is just an overview, okay? So, you know, if you have any questions, anything that, you know, you can think of off the top of your head, just put it in the comments down below, and I'll try to get to it when I can. I also, in the description, you're going to see that I have my Calculus 2 course listed uh, as, as a link, and that's going to take you right to my website. And I also have a 100-question Calculus 2 final review also up on my website, so you can go check that out. But anyways, that is going to do it for this video.